Now you tell me resistance is futile. You think I'll serve you till my last breath. But fuck it with me and I'll fuck it with you. That's why they call me the Black Death. So all I got to say to you, wine sipping bull whipping bully so utterly oppressant. When an angry mob is coming for you, what you gonna do? Damn, it feels good to be a peasant. Mm. Hey y'all, it's the Disney over here. So a lot of leftists sometimes ask the question, how do I talk to Republicans? Uh, maybe they're friends or family or co-workers, people you just can't otherwise avoid. Or you just can't help yourself but poke the bear. Uh, whatever your reasons for talking to them, I live among and am related to a vast number of Republicans. And uh, I've experienced varying degrees of success in getting them to change their minds on things or at least think about things in a different way. So for whatever it's worth to you, here's five pieces of advice I think are helpful to keep in mind when talking to Republicans. Tip the first, have a clear goal in mind. You need to ask yourself some questions. Is this for an audience? Is this to change one person's mind? Is this person random or is it someone you care about to some degree? Is this just to get some good lines in, do a little bit of mocking? If your goal is mockery, I happen to think that mockery is an effective form of criticism and engaging in it is fine. But on a personal level, I wouldn't expend a ton of energy on this activity because, frankly, it's not healthy. You need to be careful if this is somebody you care about because you don't want to poison the well for any future conversations. Because if you're going to change someone's mind, it's going to take more than one conversation. If you're doing this for an audience, you need to realize that it's very important for you to have your facts together and very important for you to be performative. People need to have confidence in what you're saying and you need to project that. And you also need to avoid falling into traps that your more skillful opponents will lay for you. Tip the second. If your goal is persuasion, be prepared to fail a lot. As an example, pious evangelical conservatives are particularly tough nuts to crack. If you can, I would avoid trying to persuade them personally, unless you are also committed to embarking on a quest to break them of their backward superstitious beliefs in regards to religion. But if it's someone dear to you, like a family member or a friend, and you feel as if you have to try, uh, you need to be prepared for the process to take a long time and to involve, at the very least, loosening the hold of some of their deeply held religious dogma and not just their political ideology or the way they vote. Some people are just really committed to the obviousness of their beliefs, right? And white supremacy or libertarianism or Christian supremacy, to the point that they become invested in it as an identity. In order to break that down, you're going to have to do a lot of work. And it's also going to require a lot of work on their end, in between your conversations. For this reason and others, there are just a lot of obstacles in your way. Propaganda is really effective, and it's created millions of people who really are incapable of seeing things from your point of view. This doesn't make you a bad person or bad at convincing people. It just means that stations like Fox News and Rush Limbaugh are really good at what they do. And unless you have the time and resources to build an accompanying multimedia empire with clearance into millions of households around the country, I wouldn't beat yourself up about it too much. Tip the third. Generally, appeal to the object of your effort's emotions, not their rationality. I'm not talking about logical fallacies or rules of debate. I'm talking about how people think and reach conclusions. Now, everyone, when they're arguing about things they are sure about, tend to view themselves as flaming swords illuminating the dark, arbiters committed to truth and logic and rationality. It must be so because they are so certain of their conclusions. It is their opponents who are missing the point or have their facts mistaken or more darkly are amoral propagandists, immoral liars, or the marks of such people. It may or may not be so in reality, but I would urge people to avoid coming off this way as if politics is a matter of the ideal of rationality and the way things work. 
The human mind very often reaches conclusions before considering evidence. It works backwards and finds reasons to support those conclusions after the fact. This vulnerability is present in everyone, which coincidentally is why the scientific method is such an enduring and reliable tool for generating human knowledge. It systematically removes this bias when employed correctly. Instead of appealing to rationality, use facts to support arguments that will appeal to their emotions and what they care about. Your goal is not just to inform them that harmless civilians in the Middle East have been blown up or that thousands of people die for lack of universal health care in the U.S. It's to make them care about it. How you do that is something that takes time or prior knowledge or a lot of luck, and you'll need to figure out what they care about already so that you can extend that care to the subject at hand. Tip the fourth, do not fetishize debate. Some ideas are not worth engaging with and some frames are not useful avenues to enlightenment. I don't support participating in public debates with white nationalists, for example, because their philosophy should be given a public airing, regardless of how skillfully one thinks it can be dismantled. This doesn't mean I want things banned by law, by the way, just that I oppose them. Debate isn't a path to truth and knowledge. It's a technique to expand it. Similarly, when you're trying to convince somebody, the goal is not to win the argument at the moment, although you will if you're doing it right. It's about planting seeds of doubt that are effective enough at gnawing at a person for them to think about them and research them. And from these seedlings, a new attitude and identity even can grow over time. Effective seeds rely on some relationship to pre-existing emotional investment and don't require any additional information to be at least unanswerable. Nourishing these seeds and tending them is going to require many, many conversations and ultimately independent efforts on the part of the other person. Finally, tip the fifth, stay strong. If you do decide to try your hand at talking to Republican voters, you will inevitably eventually come to a point where they say something so offensive or ridiculous that you'll consider throwing up your hands and walking away in a cloud of profanity, if not actively throttling the person you're talking to. You might not be being overly sensitive, You might be experiencing a healthy reaction to a really disgusting and dangerous mode of thinking. By the same token, if you're effectively challenging their beliefs and political philosophy, they will become upset, as even clear-headed people sometimes do. You yourself were probably not always as wise or intelligent as you are now, and you probably used to believe some pretty crazy stuff. And in the future, when you're wiser and smarter than you are now, if you work at it a bit, some of what you believe now will also seem crazy to you. Enlightenment is always an ongoing process. But if you're going to try to enlighten somebody else, you do need to have a kind of faith in the other mind's ability to change. If you can't muster that, then you should probably content yourself with jokes and mockery. And if you can't do that because of who the person is, then you should probably content yourself not to engage them. So, what are your thoughts? Did I miss any tips? Are these tips total bullshit? Are you wondering who the fuck I am and how dare I? Well, you can find out more about who the fuck I am and how dare I if you follow me on Twitter at Jeff as Dudeness. You can still go to distantpeasant.com. That's still headquarters, and you should still stay dissident, serfs.